Welcome to part four of our live training process here with our Drag Race Honda S2000. In this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing our part throttle cruise calibration process, making sure the fuel and spark are right as we're in part throttle conditions so that when we're driving this particular drag vehicle through the pits coming up to the staging lanes or making a pass coming back through the pits, that it's gonna have reasonable drivability. We're not gonna get this kind of odd surging or any kind of bucking. We want it to drive relatively smooth. So we're gonna go and make sure that everything is in order here. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session here with our Drag Race Honda S2000. Now, this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on a couple different things. The very first portion of this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at our cold start. So it's gonna be the cranking and firing of our engine. We're gonna take a look at our post start and our warm up enrichment. Now, normally I reserve this towards the end of the calibration process. So I usually wait till after I've completely mapped out the fuel tables, spark timing tables, and done all the other bits and pieces for the calibration for the vehicle. Now in this situation, I only have a limited time with the vehicle for filming, and I'm on day two here of my filming process. So I'm gonna go ahead and film this because we've already validated the warm idle. So we know the fuel and the spark and the idle control in terms of the idle control tables and spark timing feedback, all that look good. So we can actually check our cold start and make sure that everything looks good in terms of our fueling and the idle is gonna do exactly what we'd like. Um, and then we're gonna go in towards the later portion of this tutorial, take a look at our cruise area of driving. Now it's not super important on this car because it's a purely dedicated drag vehicle. It is literally going to be taking off the trailer, started up, warmed up, driven through the pits, going up to the staging lanes, stage, go down the quarter mile and come back and repeat that process again. It is not going to be driven on the street. So usually I don't spend a whole lot of time checking the part throttle drivability of a drag race vehicle, but I still want it to drive reasonable through the pits um, and not stall and have all kinds of surging or bucking problems and making sure that it's not super rich or super lean. So we're gonna go take care of that in this later portion of the tutorial. So right now let's jump in here and let's talk about where we're at in terms of our idle control and our startup just so we have an idea of what we can expect and then we can uh, go in and tweak and change some things after we fired off the engine. I'm not gonna talk, I'm actually gonna allow it to fire up let it do whatever it's going to do, log it, and then play it back because the car is super loud to talk over and um, we can get a good idea just looking at some log data of what we need to change. So let's jump in here. I'm in my fuel tab right now. I'm gonna jump over here into idle. Now in idle, I'm specifically starting off here in idle because we need to go in and factor in what our cold start's going to be. We wanna go and have our idle RPM a little bit higher than what it would be on a warm, uh, warm engine, warm starting condition. So we can see here on the warmer, coolant temperatures, we're targeting about 1400. We're doing that because we have locked VTEC on this engine and we wanna have a little bit higher idle speed so we have a little bit better idle stability. If it was stock cams, I would idle it right around 900 to 1000. But in this case, because we have big injectors, we have these 2600 cc injectors at 60 pound base, they're flowing about 3000 cc, which is difficult to control in itself. And then we have locked VTEC. The combination of both of those requires to have a higher idle speed. But now here at the colder coolant temperature, we're looking at our coolant temp, we're here about 70 degrees coolant temp here. Um, we need to have that offset a little bit higher so the engine can warm up a little bit quicker and has a little bit better stability when the engine is cold. That's gonna lead me into the idle base position table. The idle base position table is used in the drive-by wire to reference what we want our base throttle angle to be at, how much we want the throttle plate to open at and leave that amount of airflow coming into the engine. When the engine was warm, we found that 6% throttle is all we needed to maintain a good idle and target here around 1400. When we're cold, I'm targeting here about 9% throttle. So we're finding we have to open up the throttle plate a little bit more. We're doing this because we have less torque available out of the engine when the engine's cold. We have the viscosity effect, the oil's much thicker on a cold engine. We have more frictional drag on a cold engine. We also have a wall weighting effect where the fuel is gonna stick to the intake track into the intake valve. It's not gonna get into the engine as efficiently because we're not gonna be able to atomize it and spray it as well. We are on alcohol as well and ethanol here, so it's definitely going to have a lot of fuel trying to stick to the intake track and the intake valves. Then as a result, we need to come up with that lost torque. So frictional drags the, you know, from the, uh, the, the cold engine um, and the clearancing, and then the oil and then the wall wetting all lower the idle torque down on a cold engine. So we're offsetting that, trying to gain some of that lost torque back by increasing our throttle blade a little bit more on a cold engine. So that's the, the, the test we're gonna go after here. So we're gonna see how close we can get to our 1600 RPM desired target idle speed, and we can adjust from that as we take a look and play back our data log. Now another factor in here, that's going to be our startup offset table. This is going to add 
this much percentage throttle blade opening to our base position. And it only does this for a certain period of time, which we specify over here in our startup hold time and startup decay time. These two combine to say how long it's gonna add this 2% for. So the hold means it's gonna add 2% to let's say 9%, so a total of 11% throttle blade opening. And it's gonna do that for 10 seconds, and then it's gonna decay away over another 10 seconds back to just 9%. Now these values are definitely a little bit too long. I'm gonna set the startup hold time here to something like two seconds. So it has a quick flare of the engine RPM and starts to settle back down. And I'm gonna go here to the decay time and put it at something like six seconds. Just lower them down a little bit. 10 and 10 was definitely too much. So I'm gonna only add 2% throttle for about two seconds to kick the engine over a little bit easier. It's the same kind of equivalent as you giving your, uh, giving the throttle, you're opening your, your foot putting your foot on the throttle a little bit to get an engine to fire off of as a cable driven throttle body. So same kind of effect. I'm only gonna do it for a brief period of time and then decay that away. That Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.